Hi, and welcome to another Memory Keeping Monday. I'm Garden Girl Jen Gallagher, and today I'm creating a layout that is a fall layout. I'm having a lot of fall and Halloween layouts in the gallery right now, and I wanted to share a few ideas for creating a fall layout. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this stamp set from My Mind's Eye. It is called the Sweetest Thing Lavender Cutie Pie Stamps, and I love the doilies. They made me think of my grandmother's tablecloth that she uses for Thanksgiving. So I'm going to stamp the doily in a repetitive pattern, and you can see that I've started to stamp, and I've overlapped the stamp over the edge of the cardstock that I'm using. And to create a pattern, I match, I kind of fill the holes. And press firmly and don't rock the stamp. So you can see I messed up a little bit here but I'm going to trim this down and so I've started repeating this doily stamp. That doily stamp comes with several different sizes but I love the earthy elements of the doily. So let's go ahead and start building our page. I went ahead and finished this cardstock piece that I'm going to put on our layout and craft definitely reminds me of fall. on the side of our page and then I've cut these stickers from the Jelly Bean Soup flag stickers and I'm actually going to cut them in half. There's a place where you can fold them over a toothpick or a pin but I want to save the flag pieces for another day so I'm just going to use the sides that have the words on them and I'll butt those right up against the edge and again with the sticker that says good life. When I am using stickers on a layout, I often cut them out of the sticker sheet, leaving the backing intact so I can get a feel for how I want the page to look. Then I have two washi tapes. I have an orange chevron and I have a wood grain. I'm going to add a little bit of washi tape to the bottom of this cardstock piece. I'm going to lift up that cardstock and fold that washi tape around the edge of it. And then I'll do the wood grain as well. Lots of fun washi tapes in the store. When I'm layering washi tape, I look for coordinating colors and a variety of thicknesses. So you can see how it looks there. Then I have some orange and brown buttons that I've pre-tied with some yellows, yellow baker's twine. And I'm going to add them to my layout. overlap the washi tape a bit and I usually do them in sets of three to give it a nice little visual triangle so using glue dots I've added that then from the October afternoon 9 to 5 collection there is a mini album that just comes in sheets like this it has square sheets and then it has tab sheets and I love this tabbed edge and I am not using it for a mini album obviously I'm just gonna go ahead and put it right on my layout and then I've pre-punched with a office border punch, this brown border, and I'm going to use some brown stamping ink to ink the edges. I love border punches, come in a variety of different styles. And then I use this particular one a lot, and then I just use my fingers to crumple the edges, make it look a little bit more used. I don't like everything to look perfect on my page. And then I've pre-cut it so that I can center it right on that piece of paper. All right, then I have pulled some 6x6 six six sheets. This is from the Clippings Basic Gray 6x6 six six paper pad. And I love 6x6 six six paper pads, as you well know. And I'm going to Put them so it's about the same here. And I'm going to leave a gap in my page that I'm going to fill in later with some photos. And then this particular 6x6 sheet is from My Mind's Eye. It's one from one of their Indie Chic 6x6 paper pads. And again, just layer it, keeping the line parallel along the bottom. Also from the Indie Chic 
pattern paper. I loved this. It's hard to tell, but it actually has a little cross stitch feel to it. So I cut some from the B side of this pa pattern paper. It's cream on the side with little cross stitch elements in orange. Now, before I put that down, I'm actually going to stamp on it. And I usually use a foam core base just so that I can get a nice impression from my stamps. And I am using a Studio Calico stamp that says, You Are My Sunshine. And I'm going to use a craft colored brown ink to stamp. So again, press firmly, don't rock. And that's how it looks when it's complete. And then we will add this right across the top of the two pattern papers. Now I'm going to add some grid designs here, so I think I'm going to leave this off for just a second. And I'm going to start by using a coin envelope in craft from Jilly Bean Soup. You could add additional photos, additional journalings. You can even do maybe some leaves that you collected since this is a fall layout. And then I've die cut from, it reminds me of a pickle green and it matches this, it's kind of a, a tan yellow but it has pulls green out of it and I like the way that it looked. And I'm going to adhere that to my page using a glue pen. And I'll just paint the stems and the leaves with the glue pen. Zick has glue pen and Martha Stewart has a glue pen. You could also run it through an adhesive machine if you have one like that. You could use glue dots solely on the leaves. A lot of different ways to adhere this onto your layout. So I wanted to add the, the I, concept of a leaf to this layout. Now from the Jilly Bean Soup journaling cards, I cut an October journaling card out. October definitely occurs in the fall. I'm just creating a little cluster here with all of these elements. This particular tabbed sheet was cut from a Heidi Swap mini album. And I love this particular mini album and the colors that she used. If it's too long, I just hand cut the bottom. It doesn't even have to be a clean cut. Just getting it how I like. And then this is a Jenny Bolin tag. Think of tags, think of journaling cards you can add to the layout that's fun and then again I've cut around the backing of this sticker from my mind's eye it's from the sweetest thing collection and it says you are so loved and right where the bracket is on this tag I'm going to layer this sticker so you can see the cluster I've created of fall items so let's go ahead and add a photo at the bottom of the tan paper and I will use glue dots to do that as I print at home and the backing on my photos is a little bit glossy and so it doesn't take other adhesive as well. And I'm going to offset it just a little bit. And then to the bottom two corners I'm going to add some town photo corners from Canson. Again bringing in that craft color. Now I have pre-printed again from home some photos and you'll notice that the coloring on them is a little bit different. I used a photo filter. There are also photo actions that you can use to change the colors and tones in your photo. If you use Instagram or your iPhone, you'll be very familiar with the kinds of actions that you have available. For fall, I picked kind of a warm tone filter so that it would make the photos look a little bit warmer than how they were originally taken. You notice I have a gap here, and the reason is, is I wanted to add a horizontal photo and I wanted to have it askew. And to make it pop from the page, on the back I've added photo foam squares, dimensional foam squares. I use these a lot when I want to create some shadow and depth on my page. So again, I'll just layer this a little bit askew. So photos don't have to be perfectly straight on your page. 
Then let's go ahead and add that You Are My Sunshine tab to the top of the photo, just below that tag from Jenny Bolin. Also from the My Minds Indie Sheet Collection, there in the 6x6 pad, there's a beautiful orange leaf that definitely reminded me of fall. And I'm just going to notch the ends to create a pennant shape. And we'll add that on top of the cream pattern paper pennant. Make sure it's straight. And then I'm going to add a little bit more of that washi tape and I'm going to put it a little bit behind the photos and overlapping those two pennants. Then I have printed my journaling. See how the page is starting to look. I printed the journaling on craft cardstock and cut them into strips. And then I will take that same brown stamping ink and I'll ink the edges of each strip. That gives it a little bit more dimension and shadowing. Distressing from Tim Holtz works very well for this. There's also chalk edgers that you can use that come in a variety of colors. Perhaps you could use a, a pickle green like I did on that leaf or you could use an orange. And it resembles a little bit like you've painted the edges. So just mark them up a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and adhere them to our page. Want to make sure we get them in the right order. You can also add handwriting journaling to your layout. It just depends on what you like. I don't like my handwriting. There are a lot of different fonts in the two-piece store. From grunge to fat to handwritten. Lots of options. You can also use small letter stickers to do your journaling. You can even die cut your journaling by typing in the font that you want. So a lot of different fall elements on this page and although nothing was pulled except for the October journaling card from a fall collection, you can use the elements that you have in your stash to create a fall page by looking for colors that seem fall or by looking for elements that can be altered or changed to resemble fall elements. So here you have the completed layout with all of the fall elements. Be sure to visit the website under the Memory Keeping Monday video section for the complete supply list and watch for our next Memory Keeping Monday video coming next week.